A man who said he heard voices and kills demons is now under arrest, accused in the murder of a Montgomery County pastor. Roland Zinna was taken into custody Wednesday after police say he killed Connery Dagadu inside a Germantown home. Montgomery County reporter Kevin Lewis is there tonight with what Zinna yelled just before police arrested him. Kevin? Well, Kimberly, a frantic 911 call. It led paramedics to this two-story residential church. The ambulance, it sped right on up that driveway, and that is when paramedics saw Zine in the front door frame. He was pacing back and forth, jumping up and down as if he were dancing, and then he allegedly exclaimed, quote, Demons. I kill demons. Jesus will see according to his legal name was Connery Dagadu, but while leading worship services in this brightly colored two-car garage, everyone called him the Apostle. He prays for people. He casts out demons from people. This woman, precious treasure Israel, recruited the Apostle to live in her home. He is a man of God. The 57-year-old often counseled total strangers, helping them purge evil spirits. On Tuesday, the apostle met with this man, Roland Zine. What was Roland doing in this room? <laughs> he spent the night with Grandpa. Grandpa said it's okay for him to sleep with me. Precious says the night was full of religious rituals, but by Wednesday morning, things had gone awry. When I got downstairs, Grandpa was sitting down, leaning against uh, the... Um, television stand with his with his tongue out with like this grandpa grandpa i mean i panicked police say zine who's charged with first degree murder was combative and kept shouting demons i killed demons church members like precious now reeling over their loss this is hard but i know that he's in heaven and in keeping with their faith, members say they'll continue to hold church services in this two-car garage. As far as Zine, police did take him to a mental health center where he reportedly told the nurse there, quote, Yesterday I killed many witches. Yes, I do that. I kill them. We are live in Germantown tonight. I'm Kevin Lewis, ABC 7 News. Whisper in the night dark Footsteps in the backyard Shadows dance on stained walls The dust every night falls Fear grips like chains tight Chasing you in moonlight Eyes gleam with twisted clay No escape what up home slices, what up home fries, and what up homes of other varieties. If you are new, welcome. I'm Emily the Fine Art Medium. I'm a psychic medium who specializes in the paranormal and has a degree in social deviance. And in today's video, we will be covering the murder of Pastor Connery Dagadu during a spiritual cleansing that he performed on Roland Zine of Pennsylvania. And we are going to be covering whether or not this was paranormal, or if it was mental health issues, or both. And we're just going to jump right into it and go into Roland's background. So from what I could find, he did serve in the United States Army from 1997 to 2000. He was a DJ, but he originated from... Liberia in Africa. Now, not much really is known about his background. We get some information from his fiance that he pretty much just went to work, did his business, and came home. He didn't have much friends, if at all. And for her, it was very like out of the ordinary that he would do anything like this. And prior to the murder. He did post some sus Facebook posts and I'll put them here. One on March 8th and one on March 10th. And March 10th is pretty much the day he goes to see the pastor. And the reason why he wanted to go to the pastor was because he was hearing voices in his head and he wanted the pastor to pray them away. The pastor was known for doing 
deliverances for people and praying over people to help cast out demons and evil spirits. And so he made an appointment with him and had a cleansing scheduled. But as you guys now know, the cleansing and the meeting with Pastor Connery did not go very well. Now, because Roland Zanay came to him, like, in the middle of the night, he ended up staying over, and the murder happened the next morning. And that was through, I guess, a fight that they had and killed the pastor through asphyxiation. And, yeah... So the question is, what made the U.S. Army veteran just kind of snap? Because it almost feels like he it just came out of nowhere. But I guess not knowing much of that person's past kind of alludes to that. But again, we're not him. We're not the fiancé. So we don't know everything that's going on. So I had to channel to see if I could get in some information about this case. Because to me, it just felt very strange. And him going off about like witches and demons and how people who are into that must repent. And it made me think. And it kind of brought me back to like some of the nations in Africa. Witchcraft is a huge thing. And now Roland is from Liberia and so I kind of did some research too to see like what went on because that kind of belief doesn't just come out of nowhere. I felt like there was more to the case here and I found that like Liberia has somewhat of an issue in regards to witchcraft and how they deal with that in their nation and so I will read an article that I found that and I'll put the um the source down below. But there was a UN study that was done in 2015. And so this study notes that accusations of witchcraft are common in Liberia and often have devastating consequences for the accused who may be subjected to trial by ordeal, which is cleansing or exorcism rituals, expulsion, ostracization, and even death. In many cases, documented in the report trial by ordeal amounted to torture both physical and psychological and in some cases even led to death so with that being known that tells me that there's somewhat of a witchcraft problem in Liberia and how they deal with it there and so that kind of brought me to believing that he's from Liberia we know this we found that in the sources and so, however he was brought up, he had that strong belief that, you know, witchcraft is no good, the devil's no good, and almost has somewhat of a radical system of how, I don't know, how to deal with it. But we don't know, like, how far radical he is. And then I did my meditation. So during my meditation, I did find that his thought patterns were all over the place and very like disorganized. Like they were just like, I don't know how else to describe it other than showing you like, <laughs> it's very similar to when I tapped into people that have ADHD, but it's even more incoherent. It's like all over the place. Like, yeah, ADHD people can like switch between topics and subjects and things and switch their focus, but it's usually still organized in the way in which they talk about things or they think about things. Like there's a cohesive sentence. Whereas with Roland, there was no like cohesive sentence at all. And that is very um, typical for people with schizophrenia, especially when they speak, it's like their, I don't know, their speech is kind of over the, all over the place too. And so 
this is where I'm starting to lean towards schizophrenia, maybe undiagnosed schizophrenia. Um, it's interesting though, because I was seeing things from the perspective, like if you've watched my video way back a few months, more than a few months ago, where I covered the case, the devil made me do it, Arnie Johnson's case, where he kind of sees this thing and he kind of takes it as fighting for his life and he has to defend himself and he's being attacked. I kind of see that through Roland's eyes in a way, which kind of make it a little confusing whether or not it's paranormal related, like an entity attack or if it's still mental illness. But I'm still leaning towards mental illness because from his religious background, now, of course, we don't know too much about his religious background. What we do know is he was brought up in Liberia. We don't know how long he lived there um, before he came to the United States. But I feel like it was enough to the point where he had a basic foundation of religious beliefs and just philosophical beliefs and just, like, at least a base level of, like, who he is and his religious background and culture, if that makes sense. So it wouldn't be too far to say that, at least in the schizophrenia, kind of like pulled from that belief system. Um, I did notice there was no remorse when I tapped in, which is not good. <laughs> But I will say I did see three creepy female figures dressed in dark dresses and black hair with pale complexions and creepily smiling at him. And I feel like maybe that could have been what he was seeing in his hallucinations. They were just standing there and just like kind of harassing him in his thoughts. But other than that, I didn't see the exchange of energy. So when someone has an attachment, right, usually there is an exchange of energy. The attachment will oppress the person to feed off of them because it creates negative response to feed off of them. I didn't see that whatsoever in this situation. And you're not going to have negative entities oppress or harass or attack or haunt somebody without having any type of energy exchange. And so to me, that just kind of pushed more of the schizophrenia idea. And I'm pretty sure that's what's going on there. Typically, if it is, again, some type of influence or possession or attachment, there's more than just images or visions of the entity or being and like them audibly communicating to their target. Usually there's more, especially on the energy exchange side of things. And a lot of times too, there's other entities at play. There's more. And I wasn't getting that. I didn't see any haunting in his house. Um, I didn't see anything crazy with the girlfriend or fiance, whatever you want to call her. It just seemed very flat. Does that make sense? I don't know if that makes sense. And so when I see something like this, this is where I get pushed to mental illness. And so with him, there may have been paranormal aspects because of hearing the voices and having hallucinations of paranormal related things. But I think at the end of the day, this is more mental illness, undiagnosed. And I feel like for him, because it almost feels like it came out of nowhere, I'm almost wondering if something happened where he was under a lot of stress or pressure to where it kind of like ramped up the symptoms that may not have even been noticeable really until he was under a stressful situation. And it kind of just like, I don't know, amped up a lot. So maybe something happened at work or he got into some kind of altercation at work or family issues or fiance issues, something, maybe money issues. And it kind of just like ramped up and put him under enough stress to where the schizophrenia kind of 
wasn't dormant anymore. So that is what I feel. Now I'm going to read this article and again the source will be down below but it gives a good idea of religiosity in schizophrenia and what it's all about and I feel like it does kind of co coincide with this person and the symptoms that he was exhibiting. A lot of times people with like a heavy religious upbringing and they have schizophrenia simultaneously are more apt to have religious and spiritual delusions and hallucinations. For many people, religion is one way that we understand the world and give meaning to our lives. And certainly religion and spirituality play an important part in many people's experiences of schizophrenia. For some sufferers, religious delusions or intense religiously based irrational thinking may be a component of their symptoms. For instance, they may believe that they have been sent by God to become a great prophet. However, for other people, religion and spirituality play an important role in their recovery process. They may find that their spiritual beliefs and practices help them to make sense of the world in a way that they could not when they were suffering from psychotic delusions, and that membership of a supportive faith community provides vital fellowship when faced by the everyday problems of living with a serious mental health condition. In this series of information, Sheets, we look at spirituality from a number of different perspectives, both when it comes to a problem as in religious delusions and when it becomes a supportive component of a recovery process. What are religious delusions? In the page, we look at how religious delusions manifest themselves and many people suffering from the effects of psychotic thinking. In our related information sheets, such as spirituality and schizophrenia, a Christian perspective, other writers give their own accounts of how their spiritual and religious beliefs have helped them. It is often said that a person experiencing the first stages of serious schizophrenia is more likely to go see a priest than a psychiatrist. This is because the delusions suffered by people with schizophrenia often have a religious content. Sufferers may believe that they are a saint, a prophet, or God himself, which is more common in men or in women that they are a saint or are pregnant with the Messiah. Sometimes the people may believe that they are being punished for some unforgivable sin that they have committed earlier in their life or that they are damned to everlasting hell. This can lead to feelings of intense despondency and in other cases the sufferer may believe that others around them are devils or witches and may attack them or they themselves are possessed by devils. There is an amusing story from the 1980s of two patients meeting for the first time on a psychiatric ward who, after telling each other their story, immediately fell into an altercation with one patient, accusing the other of being an imposter. How can you be Jesus Christ? He said, I am Christ. How common are religious delusions in schizophrenia? Various studies have found that the prevalence of religious delusions in schizophrenia is very high. Tory, in the US, for instance, has suggested that around half of sufferers there experience religious delusions. Other studies in other parts of the world have found differently. More and I'm going to say his name wrong, Hewlett, 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 I don't know, in Switzerland found the prevalence to be around 21%. This was probably representative to the overall prevalence in Western Europe. And Ruda Levisian and his colleagues in Lithuania found it to be as high as 64% there. Whatever the figures may be for an individual country, it is clearly a trait that is very common in schizophrenia, and psychiatrists encounter it so frequently that they have come up with a name for it, religiosity or religious preoccupation. Religiosity is definitely not new. The early psychiatrists in the 19th century observed the phenomenon, although it was not thought to be quite as common then as now. Religiosity in psychiatry. How is religiosity diagnosed? Psychiatry and religion have traditionally been ill at ease with each other, and in today's increasingly secular society, which the UK has undoubtedly become many mental health professionals, feel uncomfortable when dealing with 
the issue of religiosity and have difficulty in understanding it in the context of the whole person. Those factors have made it difficult for doctors to properly diagnose religiosity. There is an extreme example of a ward nurse in a West Country hospital listing a woman's crucifix on her list of belongings as a lucky charm. This may be a good example of how incomplete and understanding medical professionals often have today on religious issues or it may be an example of an individual member of staff allowing her own personal secular agenda to overcome the necessity for professionalism in the practice of her vocation. Whichever it is, I believe a good example of the difficulty that many health professionals have in the UK of understanding religious practice and without such an understanding diagnosing religiosity properly becomes very difficult. Coverage, or to be more precise, lack of it, and the medical literature has not really helped this problem. Despite religiosity being such a common experience for people with schizophrenia, it is not particularly well covered by the medical literature. A review of four major psychiatric journals carried out in the United States in 1982 found that only 2.5% of the articles even mentioned religiosity and that in most cases the mention was just cursory. Religious delusions may be difficult to distinguish in diagnosis often depends on a complete knowledge of the person's previous religious history. For instance, if the sufferer has never had a religious background but has suddenly started visiting churches three times a day, this would be significant, whereas if previously they had attended church regularly, then weekly church, going would not be out of place and bear in mind that in some faiths, religious observance can be quite significant and involve praying several times a day or abstaining from food at certain times. This is a good example of how the cultural context of religiosity is vital to understanding it. In days of old in many societies in the developing world, mental health and spirituality are seen to be closely related. Indeed, the Greek word psyche, from which we derive our terms psychologist and psychotherapy, originally meant the soul or spirit. Excessive religious observance is often the first sign that relatives see that something is amiss. Visiting churches too frequently, praying continuously, and fasting, sufferers may often lose excessive amounts of weight, when there has been no previous interest in religious activities are often a sign that something is seriously wrong. It is vital that doctors listen to relatives and take into account any recent changes in the person's behavior or lifestyle. However, the major part of the evidence of religious delusions will come from the diagnostic interview with the patient and any further contact that the doctor has with them. As we have seen above, holding extreme religious views does not of itself indicate mental illness. However, doctors should look for any signs of anomalous religious behaviors or beliefs that appear to have started without any prompting and may occur in conjunction with other symptoms such as paranoia or hallucinations. Today's guidance to psychiatrists in both the UK and US is sound and very explicit in that they must familiarize themselves with the patient's cultural background before interpreting religious practice as delusional. Why do people with schizophrenia experience religious delusions. First of all, it is important to remember that schizophrenia is predominantly, but not exclusively, a condition of young people with three quarters of all diagnoses being made between ages 16 and 25. This is a time when spiritual and philosophical beliefs are usually in a great state of flux and when the person is extremely vulnerable to deluded thinking on this issue. It is also important to realize that all of the person's previous ideas, beliefs, and experiences from the framework for their psychotic thinking, and because religion still plays an important part in our society, it is not surprising that there will be a religious component within psychotic beliefs. But psychotic thinking is not restricted to religion. 
It reflects all aspects of a person's experiences. For instance, the belief widely held by many people with schizophrenia that they are being spied on by MI5 would not have existed in the 19th century before MI5 was created. Although, acknowledging that people's previous experiences can form the framework for psychotic thinking, it is not the same as saying that it causes it. Schizophrenia is no more the result of a religious upbringing than it is the result of watching too many spy movies. We also see cultural background reflected in the nature of the religious delusions themselves. For instance, in predominantly Catholic countries, the delusions will reflect Catholic beliefs, whereas in predominantly Hindu countries, they will reflect Hindu ones. There are also some interesting twists on this, though. For instance, in Poland, religious delusions in people with schizophrenia appeared to increase during the decades of communism when organized religion came under pressure from the state. Why is religiosity significant? Some studies have found that sufferers who experience religious delusions tend to experience a more severe course of their illness with a poor prognosis. In addition, religious delusions and hallucinations can give rise to disturbed behavior that can sometimes be dangerous to both the sufferer and to those around them. Religious delusions may also be accompanied by hallucinations of a religious nature. The most common here is the phenomenon of hearing voices which the sufferer may interpret as messages from God or saints. The person may also experience visual hallucinations which they interpret as visions. Religious delusions and hallucinations often link together and can be very powerful in the way they influence a person's behavior. After all, if you believe that the voices that you are hearing in your head and which are giving you commands are coming from God or some other higher power, then there is a powerful reason to listen to them and obey them. When we talk of hearing voices, here, we are not describing the normal self-talk that every individual experiences. The voices that a person with schizophrenia hears are qualitatively different to that. They are true auditory hallucinations, hearing things that the hearer cannot distinguish from reality. Religious delusions may also lead to dangerous behavior. Both homicide and violence have been committed by people with schizophrenia at the behest of their religious delusions and some have taken statements from the Bible to pluck out offending eyes or cut off offending body parts literally and have done themselves great harm. This is not to say that all people with schizophrenia who experience religiosity will display dangerous or disturbed behavior. That is certainly not the case. However, with over a thousand people with schizophrenia dying by their own hand in the UK each year, we cannot afford to dismiss or minimize the problem of dangerous behavior in schizophrenia, and it is important that doctors and police take seriously any reports reaching them from faith communities of these kinds of problems. The key of minimizing dangerous behavior is to catch it early and make it an early intervention with psychiatric treatment. Taking a wait and see approach is often disastrous. But so I wanted to read this because it's it's really hard to know for sure without knowing his full background, but coming from Liberia where they prosecute witches and people who perform witchcraft or associate with demons, it's no surprise that his delusions would go as far as they did. Now, one may argue that this is paranormal related because, no, one may argue that this was paranormal in terms of like an attachment lashing out because of the target, which was the pastor, and thinking that, oh, it's because the attachment wanted to hurt somebody of the light and that's why you know that person was picked but my argument against this would be somebody with schizophrenia and delusions and hallucinations there isn't necessarily 
a comprehensive reason or motive or what's how do I want to say it like it doesn't have to make sense to us but as long as it makes sense to the person that's causing the problem that's all that matters and so while I do think that the reason he murdered the pastor was because of his hallucinations and delusions I would say that like uh, it's really hard to put it into words I don't think that specific person was selected because of him performing Delu oh my god, I can't with the fucking sirens. I don't think the pastor was specifically chosen based off of his abilities and what he does. I don't think the pastor was chosen based off of his capability. Oh my god, what the fuck? I don't think the pastor was specifically chosen based off of his capabilities and his ability to perform deliverances and remove demons or entities or attachments or whatever you want to call them. I honestly think that based off of his delusions and hallucinations, as long as it was somebody who seemed magical or seemed like they had any type of abilities, whether it was witchcraft or through Christianity or whatever, as long as there was some kind of element to it, it didn't matter. And so I just feel like that pastor just happened to be chosen because when he was searching for somebody to help him with the voices, that's just who they brought him to. If it was because of the entity lash lashing out, more than likely it would have occurred during the ritual and not afterwards in the morning. Does that make sense? Yes, it's possible for there to be a delayed reaction, but just based off of what I know, what I've seen through the channeling, I don't... I don't feel that this was an attachment oriented situation. This had to do 100% with undiagnosed schizophrenia and because he didn't have many people around him, he didn't have much friends. We don't know anything about like his family and we only know about his fiance. So if you're not around a lot of people, that means there's not going to be many people to notice when things are off with another. Does that make sense? So, yeah, I just feel like there weren't enough people around him in his life to catch that there was something wrong. If he was working a lot to provide for his family and he's, you know, off doing things like that, he probably isn't around his fiance all that much. And it only seemed like through the articles, and I could be wrong, so you can correct me, but it only seemed like they were together for a year. And yeah, you can learn a lot about a person in a year, but like, I I feel like you don't know everything about the person and there's a lot of things yet to be learned. So I can see how undiagnosed schizophrenia can go unnoticed. Not to mention like, let's say, well, we know he's from Liberia, right? And maybe the fiance has some ties to Africa or Liberia, Liberia or another nation in Africa to where like they were brought up having similar beliefs so maybe like hearing him speak about some of these things wasn't out of the norm for her or even for family members that have observed him especially like if that's what they were taught and that's what they were brought up around having any kind of opinion about that to that degree might be normal to them. 
and that's how it could be missed. But yeah, guys, I wanted to cover this video because it can easily be misinterpreted as paranormal related or at least the incident being caused by paranormal factors. But yeah, guys, what do you think about this video? Do you disagree? Do you think this was all paranormal? Do you think he was affected by a really negative entity and he was possessed? Or do you think it was strictly mental health? Or maybe both? Let me know down below. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Peace. Follow me.